The first step in making acorn flour is cracking the acorns, separating the meat from the holes. These acorns have all went through the float test and they sink, meaning they are good, or at least most of them are good. Um, so we're gonna crack them and separate the meat out. These are Baroque acorns, so they're really big. And um, they are a type of white oak, which means they're actually pretty low in tannins, so they won't have to um, soak as long as, as uh, other acorns, like a red oak acorn would have to soak. So if they're dry, then the paper shells come off really easy. And that's our first step. Our next step is going to be blending the acorns into a slurry so we can separate out the tannins. So I've got my acorn in here. I have some water. I'm going to cover the acorns. And then I'm just going to blend it so there's no big chunks left. And then I will blend my next batch to add to the pitcher as well. Our next step is going to be separating out the starch so that we can keep it and use it as a cornstarch substitute. So we're going to run our slurry that we just made in the blender through a cloth. This is just a cotton cloth towel. Dump this in here. Like that. I'm gonna pick up the ends. I'm just gonna allow the starch is really small, so it's gonna pass through. And that's what this milky water is down here. And the acorn flour will stay in the towel. I'm gonna squeeze it, get all the starch out I can. and there'll still be a little bit of starch in the flour. I'm going to return the flour to the pitcher. Fill this up with water and allow, um, I'll set it in the refrigerator and allow it to precipitate out. About twice a day I will get this out and dump off the water and refill it again and stir it and set it back in. And the tannins will leach out of the acorns into the water. Um, it'll probably take a few changes. As soon as the acorn flour stops tasting bitter, then it's ready to move on with our next step. Now this starch water, I'm going to pour into a separate container and let it do the same thing. Over time, it's gonna precipitate out. I'm gonna pour off the water from the top and add extra water and stir and let it settle down again until it is not bitter anymore. It will only take maybe three or four changes of water. So yeah, and that will separate out our acorn starch, which after we dry can be used like corn starch as a thickener and our acorn flour. going to pour off the tannin water now. This is my starch. So I'm just going to pour it until I get to the starch level. Right there. I'm going to add some water to it. I use filtered water instead of tap water in mine. Stir it up. I'll set that back in the refrigerator to separate again. And here is my flour. I'm going to do the same thing with that. I'm going to pour off the top water that has the tannins in it, leaving the flour in the bottom. I'm 
going to add water. Fill it back up. Stir it a little bit. Then I'll set those back in the refrigerator to separate out and we'll do it all over again. I'm gonna keep doing this until the flour and the starch are no longer bitter. Now I'm going to dehydrate my acorn starch. I've scraped it out of the jar and into my dehydrator on some, paper, some uh, parchment paper. And I'm gonna dry it on the lowest setting until it's dry and crumbly. And then I will crumble it up and keep it in a jar and use it as starch. Here is my starch after it's been dried. And I'm just gonna go through roll it between my fingers, turn it into a powder. You could put it through a coffee grinder or something to make it a little bit more powdery and fine. And then I will store this in the cabinet. I might store it in the refrigerator if I'm not gonna use it for an extended period of time. And then this you just use as a thickener in place of cornstarch. Next, I will work on drying the acorn flour. Okay, I poured off the last soaking of the acorns and I have uh, tasted it and it is to my liking. So I'm going to drain it now and dry it. So I'm just going to run it through this cotton cloth. I'm just gonna dump all this in here. And that will get it as dry as possible. Gather this up. I'm going to squeeze all the water through there. Okay. And then what we have left in here is going to be crumbly kind of starting to get dry. I'm gonna spread this out on my dehydrating shelves and get that dried I'm at the lowest temperature, so like 95 degrees, and dry it. And then I might process it into finer flour so that I can use it straight as a flour substitute. Right now it's a little bit heavy and coarse. I now have some on a dehydrator tray. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, you can also dry this in your oven if you don't have a dehydrator tray. You just need to make your oven the very lowest temperature you can and um, so that the inside's about 95 to 100 degrees. You might have to prop the oven door open so that it doesn't cook too much because you're not wanting to roast it, you just want to dehydrate it. So I'm ready to put these in the dehydrator. After drying my acorn flour, in the dehydrator. I decided to run it through a blender again to make it more fine so I can use it as a substitute for almond flour in my recipes. I will be keeping this in the freezer since it doesn't have any preservatives. It can go bad if any moisture gets to it. So I will seal it up, keep it in the freezer, and use it from there. I hope everyone has enjoyed the process of making acorn flour from raw acorns.